I always say our business is like our body. When our back hurts, most of the time it's on our back. It's our mm -hmm. knees, our feet, our hips that are causing a problem, but where the pain is in, it is in our back. And our business is very similar. People have the pain in sales and revenue and they think they have a sales and revenue problem, but sometimes it's a marketing problem or a branding problem. So what I really love to do, I have a process where I look at these areas and I actually have eight areas that I look in because this is the thing. You can be a one trick pony and go fix mm -hmm. one thing and put the bandaid on. But if you're not looking at all the holes in the boat, you're just, you know, banding, uh, just putting the band-aids on and the water's just <laughs> right coming in. So I don't want to be that one trick pony that just fixes one or two things. I can look at, you know, it's a really trained eye to look at things as a whole. And you can see, oh, this, this, and this is causing this problem. Mm -hmm. And so that's always, you know, I've been doing this 22 years. And I would say the first 10 years, I just focused on that one or two problems. But it never revealed the source, the source of the pain. And that's what I love now um, specializing in is getting to the source of the problem. And most of the time, a sales problem is actually a branding or a marketing problem. It fixes yeah. the problem. <laughs> so and um, so explain a little bit about because uh, especially on the branding piece because yeah. to begin with because I always feel this is something that is not totally understood yes by by many people like most people think oh branding oh well that's like a get your pretty logo get your corporate colors away we go we're branded we're good to go no and obviously and obviously as you know that's not the case so I, I love your take on 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 branding and how important that is and as you said sometimes that can be the key problem yeah and i have a seven step process in branding marketing and sales i teach at conferences and i can't tell you how many people come up to me and they go oh, i've had my business for five years ten years i'm a 20 million dollar company and i didn't know this this and this and I feel like the problem is when we're talking about branding, marketing, and sales, no one yeah. ever teaches it together. You have yeah. the sales expert and you have a marketing expert, maybe a branding expert, but what a lot of entrepreneurs don't understand is how they operate together. So I want to give you just a couple yeah. distinctions between, yeah, the three. So in yeah, short, true. branding is a me conversation. Marketing is an attraction conversation and sales is a conversion conversation. Let's just start with those three, just mm -hmm. what those are. Breaking down the me conversation, like you said, it is a beautiful logo, but our brand goes so much more you know, than that. So it's vision, it's values, it's purpose, it's brand promise, it's brand identity. What you're talking about, a beautiful logo, mm -hmm. that's brand identity. All of our marketing materials, our book, our flyers, our website, that's brand identity, but that's only one of the five really important things as a brand. And if you don't know yourself as a brand, you're selling a widget, you're selling a yeah. product and service that anybody can compete with because it's just a product and service. It doesn't have a brand behind it. Yeah. Um, um, what what really means is that brand? Yeah, because one of the things that I, was, I find incredible is, yeah, you could do all this work on branding and you can make sure you have your mission vision. You can have all of this stuff, but it's never properly communicated to everybody in the organization so that they can embody it and embrace it. Because at the end of the day, the perception of your brand comes from the people who interact with it from the outside. So if I'm interacting with you and I get one sense of the company and then I somebody interacts with me and they get a different sense of the company that that already undermines your brand 100 percent, and I'm glad that you brought that up because part of the branding process is doing the work to under uh, um, understand those five elements and then the second part which is a lot of people's struggle part is how to communicate that how do you communicate your values in a way that attracts people that are attracted mm -hmm. to their values to your brand promise. How do you fulfill on your brand promise and all your employees fulfill on your brand promise? So it's not only just communicated out to your target market, but internally, are your employees actually being these things? And that your employees are your brand. 
right? Mm -hmm. So that's where a lot of people just get off. You know, yeah. they don't have a brand. They're not representing anything. They don't stand for anything because they don't even know what they're standing for. Mm -hmm. So then they go out, you know, they don't have that. And then they go out and market and they don't really know or understand their target market. So you have a brand that doesn't really exist and stand for anything and or unique and you're throwing your product and your service out to your target market, but you don't really understand them, who they are and how to speak to them. And then you wonder why, why aren't I, you know, making the money that I want? Yeah, no, I always, I always love it, particularly, I always love when, you know, companies have like, we're customer centric, then they have it, it's in everything, it's on their websites and their statements, everything. And then you try to contact that company and you discover how customer centric they really are not. <laughs> Correct. That's, you know, that when I do an audit, a branding, marketing, sales audit, I come at it from the customer, you know, the customer aspect of, I go through every marketing element, their website, their consultation, they're in their store, whatever their process is to see do they, you know, do, what is that customer experience? Is their brand um, present and powerful? Are they really attracting me? Could they really convert me and solve my problems? And unfortunately, a lot of people don't do their own audits and they don't understand how they are missing the mark. You know, if mm -hmm. you don't understand your target market, um, a couple of things. So, so I went through branding. The marketing piece is understanding your target market, understanding your tangibles and intangibles, super important. And then the third piece of marketing you've got to get right is your landing language. Does your language land every single piece of your marketing, all of your assets, do they land for your target market such they understand what they do, what you do, and they, it converts them. It, those are the three elements of marketing. And then the fourth piece really of marketing between marketing and sales is the choices where we're putting our marketing. What are the outlets? Right. Where are we getting our land, our landing language in front of our target markets, our champagne, wine and beer clients? Yeah. So well, one of the things that I, I think I see a lot of it, too, is so there's so there's marketing channels uh appearing or it seems almost constant new ones right new marketing channels new areas and and sometimes people fall in the trap of trying to number one run after the shiny new toy or try to be everywhere where yeah. they're not like be on tiktok when none of your customers would even know what tiktok is you know or have vaguely heard of it but this but to your point you have to be very careful about where you go and where your audience is because i see a lot of marketing groups now going scattergun yeah absolutely and it, you know, a lot of businesses don't have those kind of marketing budgets where they can be everywhere. And here it goes back to my marketing piece of target market is when you understand who your champagne client is and where they are, you should only be spending money in, in that game. I call that a greatness game, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't understand your target market and where they are and you're marketing on those platforms in front of them, building those relationships, what are you doing? I don't, you know, I don't understand when people just, you know, throw spaghetti on the wall when it comes to their marketing or they try everything. You don't need to try everything. Know who and where your target market is and go there, whether it's online or offline. So that's a big piece where people yeah. go because let's face it, I mean, a lot of marketing people will use that get out of jail card where they go, it's brand building, it's brand building, we have to, be, you won't see results immediately, but it's brand building. Right. And it doesn't convert, you know, Yeah. you bring up a, a good point, because again, back to when I'm doing speaking on this, I think one of the biggest pieces of feedback that I hear is People didn't understand, they collapse marketing and sales. They think mm -hmm. it's the same thing. And it's kind of like a rose. You know, when you're holding a rose, you have the rose bud and then you have the stem. And you can say, this is a rose, but there's two completely different things here. You have the bud mm -hmm. and you have the stem. The stem is marketing. It brings mm -hmm. the water to the rose and then the rose blooms. That's the sales. 
But without the marketing, really well done marketing, your bloom's not going to, it's going to die, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So what we have to understand is marketing's great. We all need marketing. But if you have no conversion opportunities, steps, I see people even forgetting they'll, pr they'll market something and then give no clickable link to buy it. Whether it's mm -hmm. a program, it's a book, it's an event, it's a product, they promote it, they make the beautiful graphics, again, back to branding, and but no buy here button. So you're not, again, that sales conversion conversation, mm -hmm. which is a viable link. You forgot. How are you doing <laughs> this product and no link to buy? So little, I mean, it could be as little as that, that people are forgetting. They're like, I'm doing all this marketing. And that's the conversations I'm hearing at, at entrepreneur conferences is, oh my gosh, I'm spending all this time and money on marketing and I'm not getting conversion. And now I know why is I'm not having conversion. I don't have the conversion links or the steps or the invitation mm. or the buy now there's no conversion conversation to give them the next step and that mm. is that's yeah key. yeah um i know it 100 i mean and and the other thing too is um why, why in 2022 are we still having the sales and marketing alignment conversation it seems to be like one of those things that i mean forever ever since i've been involved in business it's been an yeah. issue um, and it remains an issue today. And we talk about it all the time, but we rarely do anything about it. Yeah, it's alignment is actually, I was just talking about this yeah, last night. Alignment is one of my favorite words, because when you have alignment in your business, your brands aligned, your marketing is aligned, your sales aligned, your teams aligned, your mindsets aligned. It's all playing the same game and it makes the hugest difference versus what's the opposite of aligned is disconnected mm -hmm. and you can really feel in your business when you are disconnected it's a heavy lift it's hard you're exhausted that all tells me that there is a lack of alignment and a lack of systems in the things that matter and you know i've been coaching entrepreneurs for 22 years and it's changed, you know, this market, you know, how we marketed 22 years ago, even five years ago, completely. Mm -hmm. changes. So yes, we have to adapt to the times and the opportunities and the thing and our market, you know, sometimes our market changes, um, you know, where you, where you place your, your marketing. Um, so it's important to adapt your marketing again, where your target market is. But that alignment is so important and you can audit your own business. What mm. feels disconnected? Ask yourself, what feels disconnected? And write that down. You're going to start to reveal some of the holes in your boat when you ask yourself yeah. these harder questions. And, and the other part, too, is the fact that the way things are today, it's like salespeople and marketing people, right? Salespeople need to be have some micro marketing skills today that's just the reality of where they're in and, and and marketing need to have a much greater awareness of, of sales because the, the 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 whole buyer journey is so kind of fluid right now so that alignment is is, is critical and the help that both can give to the other because i mean say thinking with the sales cap on doesn't come naturally to a lot of marketers yeah and thinking with the marketing cap on doesn't come naturally to a lot of sales people uh -huh. Yes. So, so the key is both of those are really, really helping each other because they can't exist in silos. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, they got in business because they loved their product or service. Mm -hmm. And then they get really confronted with like, oh my gosh, I actually have to sell this and ask mm -hmm. for sales and ask for money and ask for referrals. And, um, you know, sales is a learnable skill. Um, I want to encourage everybody that's listening. If you're really great at marketing um, and you're not really great at sales, what I encourage you, get a coach, go to workshops, buy the books, whatever you need to do to become better at sales. It is a learnable skill. And I promise you, I, I had a client who was a principal of a school, $90,000 a year. He had an app idea. And he thought, you know what? I know nothing about business. I don't know how to even get this mm -hmm. out of my head. 
We pulled it out of his head, built the business, built the app. And um, the first year of, of out there, he's selling $200,000 a month or more. Wow. I mean, if, if a teacher slash principal can get over, I don't know how to sell, I'm paralyzed in selling, this confronts me to, I am really good about sales. And this is a thing, I, I believe in authentic sales. Um, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of my um, clients, whether they're a $500,000 client um, business or a hundred million dollar business, sales is an important piece. We are not building hobbies here. We're building business. Right. <laughs> you've yeah. got to master, you've got to master the skill of sales or you are building a hobby. And, you know, like I said, if a teacher can overcome and what I say is breakthrough, break out, break records, but it starts with the breakthrough, especially your mindset, your sales mindset, you, you got to do it. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think mindset mindset is absolutely absolutely critical, and and I think today also is is salespeople embracing the profession of sales because at the end of the day, I mean, if the, if sales people are are you're a conduit, you're helping people, you're bringing, you know, you're finding people who have issues or opportunities or whatever it is, and you're helping to you're helping them to achieve their goals so yeah. it's a very noble profession but we have allowed it to be denigrated so much to the point where a lot of salespeople unfortunately have taken this on board and are almost apologetic for being salespeople. yeah well and entrepreneurs you know again they are selling but their apology i, li I like mm -hmm. that use that word because there's a, an apology in there that they ask for the sale or ask for the mm -hmm. referral and i always say no apology don't mm -hmm. you apologize for who you are, what you've built, your business, your product, your service, it solves problems for people. Whatever you, you know, whatever you're selling is serving your target market. And the moment you start owning that, really owning that and selling from your greatness, not your smallness, your smallness is all your fear and, and all doubt and all that. You sell from your greatness and you own the business, the brand, the product, the service that you have, and you're proud of it. And if you can't get there, work with someone who can get you there or get out of the business because you're going to struggle. You've got to have a breakthrough in this area or you're not going to make the impact or the income that you want. Bottom yeah. line. And the yeah. And the other thing that you mentioned that I just wanted to come back to was the authentic selling piece. Right. Uh, because let's face it, authenticity has become a, one of the buzzwords right now. You know, purpose, authenticity. I can't remember. There's a few more that we could do a, a buzzword bingo on. Right. Yeah. Now. But but I mean, this whole idea of, oh, I need to become more authentic. I mean, this is just such a fallacy. Right. Or, or we need to be more authentic. Like, you know you either are authentic or you're not. And I think you have to examine that. If you if you feel the need to become authentic, then you need to take a hard look, like, like you just said about your whole approach about whether it's the right product, right company, whether you're in the right profession. Right. Authenticity is our biggest currency. Um, I, But here's the thing. There's a lot of people who, whether it's through sales training or just people telling you, you've got to be like this and you've got to be like that mm -hmm. and you've got to be like this. And then they have all these inauthentic, fake things, facades mm -hmm. that they're selling through. And that does not work. Um, you have to be really willing to get rid of these little tactics and fake things that you've, you've been somewhere told that you have to be that to sell and get back, it's like an unlearning, get back to your authentic place and your authentic self. And if you can't do that, you, you know, you're, you're selling a, a bill of goods, you're selling, you know, you're, you got to look at and, and take that examination and say, is this right for me? Um, also, I want to say this is, <clears throat> speaking of authenticity, is I mentioned intangibles, intangibles. It's a yep. piece oh, yeah. of my marketing process I put people through is what are your tangibles and your intangibles? Um, because when I do this process, this specific little piece, authenticity either gets really pulled out or they get freaked out because mm -hmm. you can't hide when you start to really, um, in the branding process, really examining who you are and what your brand is. Mm -hmm. Um, so tangibles are the things that 
people are coming to you for. You know, they come to me for systems, strategy, leadership, mindset, um, those things. Th those are the tangible things people need in their business. But my intangibles, why people hire me versus the other business coach, one, high-level partnership, high-level encouragement, high-level authenticity. Authenticity, integrity is one of my highest values. And my mm -hmm. 20 years of experience, I'll put it up against any business coach. So those are my authentic intangibles. And intangibles, another word for that is like the emotional buy-in. Yeah. So yeah, I compete in, with other business coaches in the tangibles, but I, I don't compete with anybody in my intangibles. Those are unique to me. And I promise you, if you're listening to this, when you start to really own the authentic intangibles that you offer, um, and then bonus tip, you start to put that, like weave that into your website and your language. Um, this is why people buy your intangibles. They mm. need your tangibles, but they buy you, they buy your, because they hear your intangibles. It's really, yeah. it's a, it's a journey of authenticity. A lot of people are like, I'm not doing that. I don't need that. <laughs> um, you will know, double and triple your sales because when people buy from you, they buy tangibles, but they also buy intangible. It's the invisible stuff they like about you. Yeah. And to be honest, I mean, uh, this was, this was starting pre pandemic, but it accelerated during the pandemic. I think people you know, really crave that level of authenticity. They want to deal with real people. They want to deal with people they can, they can trust. And and I think they're way more open nowadays for you know for it to be the wrong fit to go. Okay, yeah, this is great. Thank you for the conversation. I'm glad. And they go away still with a good feeling because you were authentic with them. So I think it's it's so critically important. Absolutely. And I will just I'm just going to note on that. Mm -hmm. Be willing to refer out people who yeah. are not a fit for you. That's a yeah. real step in in it for your authenticity. When you say, you know what, I don't think I'm a fit for you. Let me refer you out. It takes courage. It takes authenticity. It is to me that greatness mindset that yeah. verse, and you're not coming from scarcity. And I have to take every client. Why would you want to come from that place mm -hmm. in your sales? Yes. Absolutely. And when you do that, it's a, those people, and it's funny because the people you refer out will remember you and they'll remember you positively because, you know, they'll say, oh, that was actually interesting. You know, they said it wasn't a fit. So cool. Um, I didn't go down the wrong road. So they're more likely to refer you to somebody who is a fit. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, listen, uh, Dina, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for all of the tips uh, that you've shared today. All of Dina's information will be below this video. I always get this wrong. Um, will be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about the work you do. Well, I'm a business coach for entrepreneurs between 500,000 and 100 million and help them with the three areas, mindset and leadership, sales and marketing, branding and then internal systems. So if you need help with that, all I'm super authentic and transparent about my pricing and my packages are all on my website, dinapatton.com. Yeah, listen, fantastic. And I think that's all great. I mean, and uh, and you can hear the authenticity coming through. So I encourage you, go check out Dina and the work she does, and maybe maybe she can help your, help your business. Listen, thanks again, Dina. Thank, Thank you all for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon.